ओके गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन सॉरी 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 गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग एम आई ऑडिबल फ्रेंड्स क्विकली कन्फर्म मी एम आई ऑडिबल आर नॉट एम आई ऑडिबल हेलो ओया कुशलेंद्र दीपिका जगन्नाथन जस्ट कन्फर्म मी फ्रेंड्स इफ आई एम ऑडिबल वी विल कंटिन्यू इट Please confirm. Am I audible? Everyone, okay, perfect, 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 perfect. So, friends, let's not waste the time. Okay, in the yesterday class, we already started uh, started it, uh, and we have discussed for uh, <coughs> fifteen to twenty minutes, and it got interrupted. So, without wasting time, let's start it. So, friends, uh, please listen to me carefully. I will teach continuously for the period of twenty minutes. Listen once again, everyone. I will teach continuously for the period of twenty minutes. I will give the time to all of you to ask all your doubts. So during that time, you can ask all your doubts. Okay, okay, friends. Now let's start it. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. So let's continue. So in the yesterday class, friends, we were discussing about the the process of photosynthesis. All of you understand. Listen to me carefully. What is a photo? I said photo. I said light synthesis. What we said to make to produce something. So photosynthesis is a process where the plant is going to produce their food, right? By using what friends? By using this particular light. Kindly don't forget it. So friends, I told you in the yesterday class if the plant want to reduce the carbon dioxide into glucose. that is the ultimate goal of the photosynthesis what the plant require plant require different kinds of a raw material plant require water plant require carbon dioxide plant require energy energy is coming from sun carbon dioxide is coming from atmosphere water is coming from the soil we all know that very well now all of you listen when the plant reducing the carbon into glucose as the part of as a part of photosynthesis plant will release the oxygen as a end product all of you listen once again friends none of the plant is not going to release the oxygen purposely every plant is going to release the oxygen as a waste product as a end product <coughs> as a end product during their food preparation and we already read friends six more we are reading this particular equation from uh, ninth standard six molecule of carbon dioxide and six molecule of water giving rise to one molecule of sugar and six molecules of oxygen and in the yesterday class i told to all of you to remember one very important point what is that in our competitive exam especially in the csir in a in part c question i will solve you in 2022 question just listen where does the photosynthesis reaction takes place what i am saying out of four options given in the part c most of the time the question at least one statement will appear from where this particular reactions are actually taking place so all of you pay attention where does this particular photosynthesis re, uh, is taking place photosynthesis is taking place exactly in a specialized organelle which we call it as what friends chloroplast you all commonly know that listen to me chloroplast contain outer membrane chloroplast contain inner membrane the space between the outer and inner membrane we will be calling it as the intermembrane space kindly don't forget this particular statement and what did i tell you friends in the yesterday class inside the chloroplast there are flat end vesicle structures are present friends what do you call this particular flat end vesicle structure thylakoid but what did i tell to all of you the thylakoids are not arranged as a single all the time thylakoids are arranged one by one one on one so what you can say the group of thylakoids we will be calling it as the granum all of you listen to me carefully one group of thylakoids can be connected to the another group of the thylakoids how one group of thylakoids can be connected to the another group of thylakoids by a thin thread like structure which we called my friends lamella do not forget the statement so once again quickly understand 
chloroplast contain outer membrane inner membrane inter membrane inside the chloroplast flattened vesicle we called thylakoid and thylakoids are arranged in a group the group of thylakoids we call granum one group of thylakoids can be associated with the another group of a thylakoid by a thin thread like structure which we call it as friends lamella that's the common point now all of you listen to me very carefully friends <clears throat> where this particular thylakoid and lamella present they are present in a gel like structure they are present in a cytoplasmic structure they are present in a mat i mean to say cytoplasmic structure or a matrix like structure what do you call that stroma and you all commonly know that friends chloroplast we used to call it as what self replicating organelle yes or no of course yes we use it to call it the chloroplast as a self replicating organelle because it is having their own dna and it is having their ribosomes so friends they are going to synthesize the protein on their own there is a no doubt about that now all of you listen to me very carefully what is the name of the protein that is coded by this particular chloroplast dna the name of the protein that is coded by this particular chloroplast dna what do you call it as rubisco friends we read many times rubisco is the most abundant protein present on this planet earth why sir why you are calling rubisco is the most abundant protein the reason behind that if you take any leaf if you take any leaf of any plant on this planet earth 40% of every single leaf contain what my friends it contain rubisco only so that <coughs> that's why friends we can call rubisco is the most abundant protein on this planet earth never ever forget that particular point okay and you can see my friends chloroplast contain small drop of lipids chloroplast contain large starch granule you all know right friends the starch granules basically store the starch now friends please pay attention i will be explaining from basic to advanced level by that uh, however the question come we can answer so pay attention now we understand the structure of the chloroplast that's fine now you can ask me sir is there any necessity to read the inner view of the chloroplast is it really compulsory to read this particular inner view of the chloroplast friends it is mandatory we have to read this particular inner view of the chloroplast what is the reason the reason behind that listen to me different type of reactions of a photosynthesis taking place at different places once again listen different reactions in the photosynthesis taking at different places that's why we have to read compulsory the inner view of the chloroplast every one of you pay attention you only look into the picture what do you call it as granum friends please focus this is what friends thylakoid right whatever i am marking right now good evening all whatever i am marking right now what do you call it this as we will be call it this as thylakoid lamella or are thylakoid membrane the membrane of the thylakoid what you can also call it as my friends you can also call it as a lamella do not forget the point at all and friends whatever the space that is present inside the thylakoid once again all of you pay attention whatever the space that is present inside the thylakoid what do you call it that particular space you call that particular space as the lumen <coughs> all of you pay attention the space present inside we always call it as lumen do not forget the point at all friends now all of you listen to me the entire process of photosynthesis i am going to summarize in this particular slide whatever we have to read in the photosynthesis please try to understand don't confuse you know friends photosynthesis is really a small topic but you know the information is a vast amount of information every time when they are asking the four marker question in the photosynthesis they will include all the information and they can raise the part c question that's why friends whenever you are reading the photosynthesis topic always listen try to remember maximum amount of the information without fail now listen 
photosynthesis i have already told you what is the ultimate goal of the photosynthesis reduction of the carbon dioxide into glucose that is the ultimate goal of the photosynthesis now everyone listen to me do you think fixing of carbon into glucose is really a easy process not at all it's really a difficult process so plant can't fix the carbon into glucose very easily friends what the plant require if they want to fix the carbon into glucose first friends plant require energy when there is a sufficient amount of energy plant can easily fix the carbon into glucose what they require friends they require atp and nadph once plant prepare the energy then by using energy they can reduce the carbon into glucose in a very easy way now all of you listen my statements friends so but do you think friends plant can prepare the energy very easily never ever if the plant wants to prepare the energy what the plant require plant require a light without light it's highly impossible for the plant to synthesize the energy molecule but if the plant want to reduce the carbon into glucose do you think plant require light not at all so listen my words carefully preparation of a food not require light but preparation of energy required a light so friends the entire process of photosynthesis broadly categorized into two reactions one we called light reactions another one we called friends dark reactions name itself indicating right light reactions means which is occurring in the presence of light that's why we can call light reactions what is the ultimate goal or ultimate aim production of atp and nadph friends don't confuse i told you in many lessons to all of you atp we call it as energy equivalent nadph what do you call it as friends reducing equivalent but what is the common point both are involved in the energy production both are i mean to say both are energy precursors only now what is dark reaction friends please kindly don't confuse okay dark reactions doesn't mean that they are occurring in the dark that is a wrong statement dark reactions means friends they they do not require light whether the light is present whether the light is absent doesn't matter you only imagine i am a plant i am a plant if i want to prepare the food i have to prepare the food morning time also i have to prepare the food day time as well as the night also right so dark reaction doesn't mean that it is occurring in the dark dark reaction means it is light independent whether the light is present or whether the light is absent doesn't matter <coughs> the reduction of the carbon to glucose will occur continuously so friends what's the statement you have to remember light reactions are always occur in the day there is a no doubt about it whereas uh, when the dark reactions will takes place uh, they will takes place uh, both the day as well as the night so my friends uh, what we people has to read in the process of photosynthesis for part b and part c we have to read very briefly from starting to advanced level in the light reactions <clears throat> as well as in the dark reactions also now let's start one by one light reactions okay now friends everyone just give the thumb yes or no everyone so far it's clear yes or no just say quickly friends then we will go ahead anisha reducing equivalent you know right reducing equivalent are the one which can undergo the process of reduction whichever undergo the process of reduction we will be called them as a reducing equivalents your understanding even you can also remember reducing equivalents can also act as a electron carriers also <clears throat> okay that's great that's great okay so kindly don't interrupt me for the period of 20 minutes once again i'll finish something and i'll solve all your doubts let's continue <coughs> okay anisha is your doubt is clear 
light reactions what you can also call it as friends light dependent reaction what is the first statement you people has to remember for the exam point of view where does this particular light reactions are taking place that is the point you have to remember the light reactions good the light reactions are taking place on the thylakoid lamella we can also call it as what friends a thylakoid membrane now you can ask me a question sir friends please listen the lesson very carefully my target is that whatever the questions that are present in the 2022 question paper you have to answer every single question without reading anything just by listening the lesson only you will understand whether you are in a position to answer the questions or not what is the level of your understanding so i am requesting all of you pay attention towards every single slide <coughs> now the question is where the site of light reactions we read thylakoid lamella or membrane now the question comes here why the light reactions are occurring only on the membrane why not in any other area the reason behind that on the thylakoid membrane only friends there are many photosystem photosystems are present like ps2 and ps1 and friends every single electron carriers are present all the electron carriers are present on the thylakoid membrane <coughs> most importantly anyway we gonna read everything elaboratively most importantly f not f1 complex is also present which we also call it as atp synthase which is involved in the synthesis of atp <clears throat> and i forgot to tell you this ppt will help you 95 to 97 percent okay so apart from the ppt i want you to read just once just to once revise pathfinder <coughs> once revise the pathfinder enough and i will provide the practice questions just to do that particular practice questions enough so friends <coughs> now we are talking about what light reactions friends all of you listen to me light reactions are very uh, big process i mean it's a very large process time taking also why because there are lot of factors are involved <coughs> once again listen Be before completing the light reactions you should not forget this word this lines if you forgot this lines friends uh, light reactions you never ever understand so if you want to understand the light reactions first of all you have to remember the goal of light reaction that is production of atp and nadph now let's see how we are going to produce what is happening in the light reaction there is a absorption of the light why we are absorbing the light we will <coughs> we will convert that light energy into chemical energy and we will produce this particular energy precursors now the question comes here who is absorbing the light in the plant body obviously friends in the plant body there are many photosynthetic pigments are present all these photosynthetic pigments are going to absorb the light don't forget that <clears throat> now all these photosynthetic pigments are broadly categorized into principal pigments accessory pigments my friends sometimes <clears throat> the accessory pigments can also be called as antenna pigments now <clears throat> principal pigments are listen my statements very carefully principal pigments are chlorophyll a bacterio chlorophyll a chlorobium chlorophyll a friends listen my statements carefully chlorophyll a is the uh, type of a chlorophyll molecule which is most abundantly present in the green plants now you can ask me sir why you are using a word bacterio chlorophyll and why you are using a word chlorobium chlorophyll see the chlorophyll a is present in the purple bacteria there also you can called chlorophyll a only right then why you are calling it as a bacterio chlorophyll a the reason behind that modified chlorophyll a <coughs> listen my statements carefully friends modified chlorophyll a present in the purple bacteria we can called bacterio chlorophyll a modified chlorophyll a present in the green sulfur bacteria we are we are calling it as what friends chlorobium chlorophyll so they are chlorophyll a only but they got modified what way don't think that they are modified functionally no never ever function of every chlorophyll pigment is what absorbing the light what there is a change in the function 
they are just structurally modified i will show you in the next slides <coughs> we call it them as principal pigments now all of you pay attention antenna pigments or accessory pigments what are these one so antenna or accessory pigments are broadly categorized into chlorophyll b c d carotenoid phycobilins friends remember every single information please don't leave a small information in the photosynthesis because four marks are in our pocket you pay attention this particular carotenoids they are actually categorized into two types one we call it as friends carotenes another one we call it friends xanthophyll now you can ask me sir how the carotenes are differ from the xanthophyll all of you listen friends carotenes they just contain carbon hydrogen nothing else they contain <clears throat> if you look into the xanthophyll along with the carotene along with the carbon hydrogen it also contain my friends oxygen do not forget that now here comes an interesting point the carotenes are further broadly categorized into many types but i am giving you an example what is the name of the carotene that is present in the carrot we can call it as a beta carotene this thing everyone will remember friends i want you people to remember the carotene which is present in the tomato <clears throat> tomato is red in color because of what carotene what do you call that particular carotene we call it as a lycopene lycopene is the one which is basically present in the tomato which is a type of carotene only what are the examples of xanthophylls please kindly remember the best example of the xanthophyll is the lutein l u e t i n what is that lutein so then the next one phycobilins in the next slide i will explain you the structures phycobilins the examples are phycoerythrin phycocyanin yellow phycocyanin friends now here comes a question what is the question <coughs> where the chlorophyll sorry among chlorophyll carotenoid and phycobilin which are water soluble which are lipid soluble is there any necessity to know that yes we have to know the chemical nature of every pigment without fail my friends all of you people remember phycobilins are the only pigment which are water soluble <clears throat> whereas my friends all the chlorophyll molecules as well as the carotenoid molecules friends they are extremely lipid soluble please kind of soluble <clears throat> now friends let's try to understand the structure now you can ask me sir is there any necessity to remember the structure for our exam you no need to remember how the structure looks like you have to remember the structural composition which means what does that particular molecules are actually made up of that is the point you people has to remember <clears throat> it is made up of chlorophyll molecule sorry chlorophyll molecule made up of two things one we called head another one we called tail i will explain in a simple way friends please focus head and tail what is the head of the chlorophyll we call it as all of you pay attention head of the chlorophyll you will be calling it as a porphyrin head <clears throat> and friends what is the tail of the chlorophyll you will be calling it as friends the tail of the chlorophyll you will be calling it as friends phytal chain <clears throat> never forget this now let me simplify to you how does exactly the porphyrin looks like what does the porphyrin is composed of everyone pay attention you are able to see here a b c d what are this they are called pyrrol so 1 2 3 4 how many pyrrols four pyrrols four pyrrol what do you call tetra pyrrol so friends this tetra pyrrol ring come close together surround the central metal atom magnesium that is what do you called porphyrin once again listen <clears throat> porphyrin means tetra pyrrol ring 
कम क्लोज टूगेदर सराउंड द सेंट्रल मेटल एटम मैग्नीशियम दैट इज वॉट एग्जैक्टली वी कैन कॉल पॉरफाइर इन मोस्ट ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स नेवर अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज द फंक्शन ऑफ ए मैग्नीशियम इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द पार्ट बी और एज वन ऑफ द स्टेटमेंट इन द पार्ट सी friends the ultimate function of the magnesium is magnesium is actually acting like a chromophore don't forget that particular statement friends <coughs> that is called porphyrin head what is phytol chain all of you listen phytol chain is a long hydrocarbon chain simple very simple long hydrocarbon chain is a phytol chain <coughs> a tetrapyrrole surround the central metal atom magnesium that is the porphyrin now you can ask me a question just now we read that chlorophyll a chlorophyll b chlorophyll c <coughs> we read chlorophyll d and we read bacterio chlorophyll a now what is the common point every chlorophyll molecule contain the head every chlorophyll molecule contain the tail then you can ask me sir how can you differentiate one chlorophyll molecule with the another chlorophyll molecule you all will say to me sir based on the absorption of light i can separate or i can differentiate that's true point <coughs> not only that based on the structure also especially what based on their side chain based on their side chain also we can differentiate one chlorophyll molecule with the another chlorophyll molecule if you quickly look into this friends chlorophyll a having methyl group chlorophyll b having aldehyde group bacterio chlorophyll a having something else is there any necessity to remember not at all <clears throat> what you have to remember is that one chlorophyll molecule can be differ from the another chlorophyll molecule exclusively with the help of a side chain that's the unique statement i want you to remember next one <clears throat> carotenoid friends when you read the carotenoid structure i want you to remember only one point what is that one point isoprene structure what is isoprene <clears throat> all of you listen friends isoprene is a five carbon containing compound all of you friends look into the diagram carefully five carbon containing compound with the alternate double bond single bond single bond double bond single bond double bond single bond double bond single bond double bond <clears throat> so five carbon containing compound with a alternate single bond and a double bond that is what exactly my friends we will be calling it as the carotenoids very simple generally you remember isoprene now next one bilin pigments see friends bilin pigments is also a tetrapyrrole only friends just now where we read the tetrapyrrol just now we read the tetrapyrrol in the chlorophyll <clears throat> see here what i said to you tetrapyrrol is coming close together and surround the central metal atom but i want all of you remember in case of a bilin pigments it is the linear tetrapyrrol completely linear so <clears throat> i can define the structures in a simple way linear tetrapyrrole is the bilin pigment carotenoids are the isoprene structure chlorophylls are porphyrin head and phytol chain these are all the simple structures of this particular <coughs> pigments my friends now what we understand is the structure now if you ask me a question uh, now i will ask you a question what is the question what is the function of all the pigments you can say that all the pigments are involved in the absorption of light you will give me that answer that is common every pigment is involved in the absorption of light only now my question is <clears throat> if every pigment that is the chlorophyll carotenoid bilin pigments all three pigments are involved in the absorption of light now my question is then why the plant require all the three pigments any one pigment is sufficient right then why they require three pigments the answer is <clears throat> all the pigments absorb the light at different wavelengths all the pigments absorb the light at the different wavelengths now what is the statement you have to remember carotenoids so all of you listen my friends this is also very important K 
carotenoids also absorb the light at the same time carotenoids are the one which will protect the plant body from the high intensity of sunlight in a simple way carotenoids are the one which will protect the plant body from the photo oxidative damage you imagine friends you take example of human beings when we are exposing to the high intensity of sunlight what we will do we will try to escape but plant do you think plant can escape because plant can't move right so they have to tolerate that conditions how they can tolerate with the help of carotenoids so what i want you people to remember carotenoids are not only involved in the synthesis sorry involved in the absorption of light but also carotenoid plays a key role in protecting the plant body from the photo oxidative damage <clears throat> friends right now what we studied structure now let's understand the function see friends 90% of the students will get confused with this particular slide i am requesting every student understand this slide thoroughly i will explain twice use the brain apply the knowledge and understand it i'll make it simple after that i will give the time to ask all your doubts <clears throat> now you all said to me that the ultimate function of the three pigments is what friends absorption of light now you only try to understand friends if the three pigments are involved in the absorption of light listen base listen friends based on the absorption of light there were two spectra were derived based on what based on the absorption of light two spectra were derived <clears throat> very important slide pay attention one we called absorption spectra another one we called my friends action spectra what is the major difference between absorption and action let me tell you first of all everyone listen my statement carefully what do you mean by the word absorption spectra listen to me friends at which particular wavelength the particular pigment absorb maximum amount of light once again all of you listen to me i'll explain in a simple way <clears throat> at which particular wavelength the particular pigment absorbs maximum amount of the light that is what exactly we called absorption spectra now let me explain in a very elaborative way on the x axis what i have taken wavelength in nanometer on the y axis what i have taken on the y axis i have taken the amount of the light absorbed all of you pay attention <clears throat> in this particular graph we have taken three pigments chlorophyll a i have taken chlorophyll b i have taken okay and carotenoid friends everyone quickly give me the answer am i audible to everyone oh yeah i think you have to refresh am i audible to everyone friends very quickly give the reply please just type yes or no <clears throat> am i audible yes 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 <clears throat> yeah, am i audible okay perfect 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 okay oh yeah please refresh please refresh okay now friends please continue please continue as we are taking in the graph chlorophyll a i have taken chlorophyll b i have taken and my friends i have taken carotenoids please please focus 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 this is really important one friends focus <clears throat> if you look into the chlorophyll a if you look into the chlorophyll a chlorophyll a absorb see here the peak the graph of chlorophyll a is till here the peak of chlorophyll a is till here now you only try to understand friends the peak is where till here so chlorophyll a absorb dark blue light chlorophyll a absorb light blue light but my friends chlorophyll a never ever absorb green light now every student listen the statement whatever i am saying whatever the color absorbed by the pigment whatever the color absorbed by the pigment it never appear in that color 
but friends whatever the color reflected by the pigment it will always appear in that color what do you mean by that what you have to understand here <clears throat> chlorophyll a what light it is what color it is absorbing it is absorbing dark blue so it never appear in the dark blue it is absorbing the light blue it never appear in the light blue but my friends the chlorophyll a is reflecting the green light so since chlorophyll a is reflecting the green light so my friends it will appear in the <coughs> green color you all commonly know right friends why all the plants appears to be green in color because the chlorophyll a always reflect the green light it reflects the green light so plant appears to be green in color suppose take another <coughs> unique one carotenoids all of you listen to me friends carotenoids carotenoids can absorb the dark blue light carotenoids absorb the light blue light carotenoid absorb green light also but you can see the graph was till here only which means carotenoid never absorb yellow light carotenoid never absorb red light carotenoid never absorb orange light also so what do you mean by that <coughs> instead of absorbing these three colors the carotenoids are going to reflect the green color sorry they are reflecting all these colors you all commonly know right <coughs> carrot is orange color why the carrot is in orange color because it contain the carotenoid carotenoid reflect the orange color you all know very well tomato is red in color why tomato contain a lycopene which is a carotenoid which reflect the red color so friends <clears throat> what i want you to remember absorption spectra means friends uh, it is absorption spectra basically explaining us at which particular wavelength the particular pigment absorbs the light that is what absorption spectra is explaining us now next one what is action spectra friends don't confuse okay absorption spectra it is a completely about the pigment <clears throat> whatever we talk about the absorption spectra is completely about the pigment but friends when you look into the action spectra we were talking about what friends process we are talking completely process <clears throat> how can i define action spectra means at which particular wavelength the particular process occurs maximum once again listen my statement whomever did not understand at which particular wavelength the particular process occurs at its maximum that is what do you called action spectra <clears throat> friends you can take any process as an example let's take an example of photosynthesis only at which particular wavelength photosynthesis occur maximum 600 to 700 nanometer so what i can tell to you so the action spectra for the photosynthesis process will be 600 to 700 nanometer so action spectra will explain about the process absorption spectra will explain about the pigment <clears throat> okay now friends everyone in one second is that clear now you can ask me all the doubts till this particular slide i'll go little slow but effectively <clears throat> let me know friends very fast if everyone is <clears throat> fine we'll go ahead <clears throat> quick reply <clears throat> i think <clears throat> okay i hope uh, it's clear to all of you friends now listen friends still we are in the light reactions only so please kindly don't confuse still we are in the light reactions only it's a very very big process still we are in the light reactions right now we understand okay okay yes 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 kaushalendra and tarun please try to understand what i am saying kaushalendra and tarun and whomever is not understanding uh, this particular action spectra <clears throat> that's good uh, vishal first look into your questions look into your question 
विशाल यू हैव आस्क सर फोर टू फाइव हंड्रेड ऑल्सो द पीक इज हाई दैट इज एब्सोल्युटली ट्रू विशाल बट एट दिस पर्टिक्युलर पॉइंट विच पॉइंट एट फोर हंड्रेड टू फाइव हंड्रेड द पिगमेंट्स नेवर ऑब्जॉर्व द मैक्सिम अमाउंट ऑफ लाइट आई मीन टू से फोटो सिस्टम्स आर नॉट वर्किंग एफेक्टिवली एट दिस वेव लेंथ फोर हंड्रेड टू फाइव हंड्रेड नैनोमीटर फोटो सिस्टम्स आर नॉट वर्किंग एफेक्टिवली and listen my friends all of you now tarun and others who ever got the doubt about action spectra action spectra it is explaining us about process <coughs> all of you listen it is acting as sorry action spectra is explaining about the process let's take an example of a photosynthesis you all know very well in the photosynthesis uh, two photo systems are involved photo system 1 and photo system 2 there is a no doubt about it now friends photo system 1 and 2 function is what their function is what absorbing the light correct na once they absorb the light they will convert the light energy into chemical energy now the question is here friends where does this particular photo system 1 and photo system 2 absorbing the light where exactly it absorbing it can't absorb at 400 450 500 550 no they are not effective over there if they want to do the photosynthetic process efficiently they will absorb the maximum light at 600 to 700 and they work very effectively so the point at which all the photo systems are working effectively in the process of photosynthesis we will be calling it as a action spectra <coughs> is that clear now <coughs> pratishta <coughs> here all of you pratishtha your doubt is valid you are asking why the magnesium acting as a chromophore so dear what is chromo chromo color pore which can absorb see i told you right magnesium is only responsible for absorption okay it is responsible for color it will just absorb the light that's all that's why we are calling it as a chromophore it plays a key role in the absorption since it is having a chromogenic property it is having chromogenic property that's why it means absorption of a color that's why we call it as i hope everyone understand my friends clearly i think every doubt everyone doubt is cleared including pratishtha you can ask me friends okay now friends all of you listen to me carefully now we are very good now still i told you na still we are in the light reaction it's a very big process now <coughs> deepika your doubt will be cleared now you see here La what is the goal of light reaction i told to all of you friends don't forget the goal of light reaction that is the atp and nadps don't forget this now what are light harvesting complexes what is their function all of you listen look into the diagram this is the thylakoid membrane on the thylakoid membrane what i am drawing whatever i am drawing are the photosystems now inside the photosystems what are present inside the photosystem lhcs are present what are present inside the photosystem lhcs are present and what does this particular lhcs are made up of the lhcs are made up of core pigment and antenna pigment the antenna pigments we can also call it as accessory pigments now listen you have to remember lhc contain these two friends from here next six slides are very important in the light reaction if you don't understand the next six slides you can't understand the light reaction so pay attention try to know the depth light harvesting complexes made up of core pigment and antenna pigments you have to remember for the four marker question what does the core pigment is made up of what does the antenna pigments are made up of all of you pay attention core pigment is exclusively made up of only chlorophyll a antenna pigments are made up of chlorophyll b xanthophyll as well as friends carotenes please kindly do not forget this particular statement at all what does they made up of now all of you pay attention there are two photosystems are there photosystem 2 and photosystem 1 first listen to me carefully friends why we have given the name 
फोटो सिस्टम टू एंड फोटो सिस्टम वन मोस्ट ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स विल से दैट सर फोटो सिस्टम टू ऑब्जॉर्व द लाइट एट सिक्स एटी नैनोमीटर दैट्स वाई वी आर कॉलिंग इट एज ए फोटो सिस्टम टू नो देर इज इट इज ट्रू इट इज ऑब्जॉर्विंग द लाइट एट सिक्स एटी नैनोमीटर्स दैट इज नो डाउट सेम वे फोटो सिस्टम वन इज ऑब्जॉर्विंग द लाइट एट सेवन नाइन सेवन हंड्रेड नैनोमीटर वेरी इफेक्टिवली देर इज ए नो डाउट अबाउट इट but friends the reason is very simple why we are calling photo system 1 and 2 there is no logic first discovered is the photo system 1 <coughs> and second discovered is the photo system 2 that's all there is no difference at all very simple reason now <coughs> if you want to understand the light reaction this is the most important slide every fellow has to understand if you understand this slide half of the concept will be crystal clear to all of you i'll explain twice listen to me peacefully <clears throat> these are all what do you called here the green color light green color you can called antenna pigments what i said to all of you antenna pigments are made up of chlorophyll b xanthophyll carotene and uh, <clears throat> the dark green color you are seeing right that is called as reaction center what did i said to you reaction center is exclusively made up of chlorophyll a and most important one you are able to see the purple color what is that it is the primary electron acceptor and continuously there are many electron acceptors are present my friends every one of you pay attention towards the concept it's really interesting what is happening first and don't forget our goal our goal is this if you forgot the goal you can't understand the process what the antenna pigments are doing antenna pigments are absorb the light and they will transfer the energy to one by one see here from one antenna pigment to the another another to the another another to the another so this kind of transfer of energy we will be calling it as resonance transfer of energy which means the transfer of energy from one antenna pigment to the another antenna pigment now pay attention all of you finally where it reaches listen to me 10 minutes where it will reaches <coughs> reaction center now reaction center get excited once the reaction center get excited what the reaction center will do reaction center immediately release the excited electron now who is going to accept the electron this electron is accepted by electron acceptor so what first electron acceptor second electron acceptor third electron acceptor fourth electron acceptor whenever electron is moving from one electron acceptor to the another electron acceptor it lost certain energy it lost certain energy that energy we will use to produce atp now i will make you more clear friends pay attention use the brain understand apply the knowledge these are all antenna pigments antenna pigment absorb the light they transfer the energy to the reaction center now the reaction center get excited release the excited electron the excited electron can be accepted by several electron acceptor molecules when the electron is moving from one electron acceptor to the another there will be a loss of energy that energy only we used to produce majorly atp now let me explain you how now finally we are going to fulfill our goal of light reactions what is the goal of light reactions production of atp and nadph now first let's look into the atp production first what do you call the word phosphorylation how can i define the word phosphorylation production of adp sorry i'm sorry joining of adp with pi giving rise to the atp that is what i can call atp production now all of you listen do you think joining of adp with pi is that much easy process if i want to join the adp with pi what i required i require energy this is the interesting point from where we are getting the energy as i told to all of you now when the electron is moving from one electron acceptor to another electron acceptor i told you there will be a releasing of energy that energy only we will use to join the adp with pi which leads to the atp 
okay uh, jay shri how patience dear let me explain you you will get an idea you will get an idea okay so the passport relation is of two types and from b c to join the adp with the pi what what we require we require energy the energy is coming from where from the light that's why we can called photophosphorylation the photophosphorylation is of two types cyclic photophosphorylation non cyclic photophosphorylation so what are the differences i want you to anyway i have written all the differences but i want you to remember major fundamental differences the fundamental difference is in case of a cyclic phosphorylation only atp will be produced first point second point cyclic photophosphorylation never ever takes place in the plants third point cyclic photophosphorylation exclusively takes place in the bacteria fourth point in the cyclic photophosphorylation only one photosystem is involved we don't know whether it it may be photosystem 1 also photosystem 2 also please don't confuse i am saying one photosystem i never said photosystem 1 anything may present photosystem 1 also present photosystem 2 also present now non cyclic photophosphorylation here what is the point you have to remember here there is a production of atp also fundamental differences production of the nadph also it never ever takes place in the bacteria and third point it always contains it require photosystem 1 also and photosystem 2 also never forget this statement friends now let's talk about the cyclic photophosphorylation now jay shri look into the diagram carefully your doubt will be cleared dear now cyclic photophosphorylation why i have given the word cyclic photophosphorylation because the movement of electrons a uh, will be cyclic manner which means from where they have started they will come back to the same origin that's why i have called it as a cyclic photophosphorylation now all of you pay attention towards the diagram you can see now all the light green colors are green, green color ones are what antenna antenna pigments what is this dark yellow color one we can call it it as <coughs> ax i'm sorry core pigment core pigment is made up of what chlorophyll a so all the antenna pigments absorb the light send the energy to the reaction center or the core pigment but you people remember widely as a reaction center now the reaction center get excited release the excited electron now the excited electron will who is the first first electron acceptor ferridoxin then followed by plastoquinone there are two type of plastoquinones are there plastoquinone a plastoquinone b then followed by cytochrome b6f then followed by the plastocyanin so what finally electron came back to where wherever it started now jayashree please look into your question dear whatever you said is absolutely true point the electrons won't be excited all the time that's true but when the electron is moving from one electron acceptor to the another electron acceptor during their excitation excitation stage it lost the energy that energy can be used to join the adp with pi hence there is a production of the atp simple point during the excitation whenever it is moving from one electron acceptor to the another electron acceptor it lost energy that energy only used to join these two now you can ask me a question sir from where these two came from of course these two are already present inside the cell sugar phosphates everything is present inside the cell only right so they will be joined and there is a production of atp don't forget this i hope jayashri your doubt is cleared good 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 so ferridoxin plastoquinone cytochrome b6f plastocyanin friends this is the cyclic photophosphorylation 99% of the students will compare the cyclic photophosphorylation with the non cyclic photophosphorylation in terms of electron flow and they'll get confused you should not uh, uh compare the electron flow you can compare the entire process there is no problem you should not compare the electron flow why 
because this is happening in the bacteria and non cyclic is happening where in the plant so we cannot compare the plant electron scheme with the bacterial electron scheme at all but for your better remembering i am writing so in case of cyclic photophosphorylation what is this first feridoxin then followed by the plastoquinone a yeah, you just remember plast many times more than 7 to 8 times we got the question plastoquinone a plastoquinone b cytochrome b6f then followed by the plastocyanin this is the electron flow in this cyclic just for your understanding i have written non cyclic how many photosystems are involved friends of course two photosystems are involved one is the p680 another one is the p700 all of you pay attention towards this understand what exactly i'm talking about this is what p680 antenna pigment they absorb the light they will pass the energy to the reaction center what the reaction center contain chlorophyll a now reaction center get excited now the excited reaction center released the electron now in case of a cyclic photophosphorylation who is the first electron acceptor pyridoxin pyridoxin then <coughs> shahani just waited here i'll explain so who is the electron acceptor here pyridoxin in the cyclic in the non cyclic the first electron acceptor is a pheophytin after pheophytin here what quinone a quinone b here also quinone a quinone b here cytochrome b6f here also cytochrome b6f then followed by friends plastocyanin so don't confuse for your understanding i have written but you should not compare this is the cyclic in the bacteria this is the non cyclic in the plant pheophytin quinone a quinone b cytochrome b6f complex plastocyanin then friends followed by the p700 very simple point it is now all of you understand <clears throat> but in case of a non cyclic how many photosystems are there two photosystem 2 and photosystem 1 you all look into the picture when the electrons are flowing from the photosystem 2 to the photosystem 1 <clears throat> you only look into this how the electron scheme look like the electron flow look like sleeping jet <clears throat> the electron flow look like what friends sleeping jet that's why we will call it as a jet scheme we can also call it as a zigzag scheme what you can call jet scheme or the zigzag scheme friends please please listen to me carefully now <clears throat> from the plastocyanin what is happening the electron finally comes to p700 once again from the p700 it reaches to the reaction center from the reaction center who is the first electron acceptor a not then followed by a1 a not you no need to remember but i am telling for your understanding a not we can called modified chlorophyll a modified chlorophyll a only we can called a not what is a1 a1 we can called phyloquinone you people no need to remember i am just telling you for your understanding followed by iron sulfur x there is a series of iron sulfur proteins are there iron sulfur x iron sulfur a iron sulfur b fd fnr then followed by nadp plus then nadph this is the scheme of electron flow 100% you have to remember for the exam i'll summarize it later we will read briefly one by one first p6 from the p680 electrons accepted by pheophytin plastoquinone a quinone b cytochrome b6f plastocyanin p700 from the p700 electron reaches to the reaction center from the reaction center a not a1 series of iron sulfur proteins are there fesx fesa fb fd feridoxin fnr fnr means feridoxin nadp reductase what is that feridoxin nadp reductase then followed by nadp plus and followed by the nadph formation now friends don't confuse in case of a cyclic photophosphorylation we produce only atp but in the non cyclic photophosphorylation so far we produced nadph 
you should not think that we can't produce the ATP. In this slide, I did not kept. To explain you briefly, I kept you in the next slide. But you have to remember, in the non-cyclic photophosphorylation, we can produce ATP also. We can produce NADPH also. So before discussing that, let's quickly solve some questions here. Simple, simple questions. Okay. Every one of you friends, answer the question number 73, which is a part B. Shahani, it is from magnesium only, dear. Magnesium is there. There are many proton, sorry, many proteins are there actually. Shahani, there is a protein called as D1, D2, CP43, CP47. These basically release the electrons. Okay. Uh, in the upcoming slides, you will understand, dear. Okay, everyone, please kindly answer the 73 question, friends. So fast. Okay. You can very directly answer this right. P680, plastoquinone, cytochrome B6F, obviously plastocyanin. Because friends, by looking at the plastocyanin only, you can tell the answer and you can eliminate these three options very, very easily, friends. Simple point. Very good. Okay. Answer this question, which is a four marker. Please answer question number 80, which is a four marker. Think and answer, friends. Think and answer, please. Think and answer. Don't be hurry, please. Jayashree, very fast. Check your answer, dear. Please check, check it. You have to always check thoroughly, dear. Sumaya, so, there is a no R, dear. What is that R I am not getting? No, look into the question. Which of the combination is correct? Friends, have patience slowly. No one is analyzing the question. You have to choose the combination. Slowly, friends, slowly, please, slowly, please. Friends, all of you not thinking. Look into the given question. In a photosynthetic electron transport, electron travel through the carriers organized in the jet scheme, the following are indicated as a direction of the electron flow. Oh, I'm so sorry. Now you only look into the given question. First one. P680, PQA, PQB, cytochrome B6F, pheophytin. This is absolutely wrong, right? After P680, which has to come? Pheophytin has to come. So P is wrong. If you look into the Q, just now I told you P700, A0, A1, iron sulfur X, iron sulfur A, iron sulfur B, FD, FNR, finally NADP. Correct, right? So Q is absolutely right. Now if you look into the R, P680, pheophytin, quinone A, quinone B, cytochrome B6F, PC, P700. R is right. Yes, P700, A1, no right. After P700, A0 will accept the electron. So P is wrong, S is wrong. The correct answer will be B. Okay. Friends, everyone tell me, is that clear for every student till this slide? Every one of you, please give me the answer. Is that clear for everyone till this slide? Let me know. Let me know. Okay. I hope uh, it's clear for everyone. Okay. 
now friends uh, that's all for today so i just want to ask one thing see if i take uh, if i just want to ask you one thing just give your suggestions uh, based on your request i will do my uh, my question is uh, if i take 2 hours in a day if i take 2 hours in a day less than 90 to 100 days uh, less than 90 to 100 days uh, i can easily finish the 11 chapters minimum if i take uh, every day 2 hours if i take so if you all agree that you will all attend uh, till the end every day two hours see my time is also very important and very precious for me so uh, if most of the people are not attending the classes i don't spend that much time so if you all agree and if you are really serious about the exam i am ready to help you by taking the two hours of class every single day from the coming thursday okay and this timing to confirmed that is the 8 30 to 9 30 time is confirmed there is a no change in the timing i am requesting all of you since if you wake up early in the morning if you wake up early in the morning uh, you can read also you can revise also so it's my responsibility i will wake you up in the 6 a.m okay i mean to say we will keep the class at the 6 a.m to 7 a.m if we clip 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. friends, we can easily, one hour in the morning you can read and night also you can read. So, very shortly I can finish it. Okay, so if you all are ready to wake up at 6 a.m. So, in the telegram, I will give the message by 5 a.m. itself, a kind of a reminder. Then we can start the classes from 6 a.m. Are you ready for the 6 a.m.? Perfect. Okay, just give the thumbs. Oh, great, great, great. Okay, then. So, from the Thursday onwards, I will start at the 6 a.m. Don't worry. Don't worry, friends. Your success is my utmost responsibility. Okay. So, I want you people to only work very hard. Work hard in such a way that we have to crack the exam just like that. And we have to get more amount of the knowledge. Okay. That's all, friends. I will see you by tomorrow sharp 8.30 p.m. Okay, I'll be there till the end of the exam for all of you. Don't worry at all. Okay. Okay, friends, that's all for now. I'm requesting all of you friends. Yeah, 6 a.m. is okay for everyone. Yes. So, I'm requesting all of you friends, please kindly share the links and telegram link and YouTube channel link to most of the people. Okay. By that, we can reach many people and we can help many people by providing the quality of coaching. Okay friends, thank you.